Hey guys, thanks for joining me today. I'm Mark, this is Big Backpacking, and today I wanted to talk with you guys about one of the most popular pieces of lightweight backpacking gear out there. The lightest shelter, well, one of the lightest shelters that's out there, and one of the most popular ones for sure. And I'm sure you guessed it, it's the one right here beside me. This is the Z-Pax Duplex. So let's talk about this tent for a little bit. So we could sit here and we could go through this tent and we could talk about all the dimensions of it, the weights of it, what the materials are, but you can find a lot of that on z -Pack's website. I went with the camo version for a little bit of the concealed part, like being inside of it and not being able to see in or out. Um, the camo does that, whereas the other ones, the other colors that it comes in are a thinner material. You can get it in a thicker material but it's definitely more see-through, whereas the camo one gives you a little bit more privacy. So that's why I went with this. Sure, it's got these bright green, you can swap these out. These, all these poles on it, all the guy lines are all this bright green. So stealth-wise, eh, this kind of defeats that purpose, but that's not why I've got this one. It's not really for that stealth stuff. It's more to make it a little bit darker inside and conceal a little bit more of the light going in and out. So what makes the Z-Pax Duplex such a popular shelter option for those, especially those doing long trails like the AT, PCT, CDT, and others? What makes this such an attractive option? Well, the lightweight compared to the size is probably the biggest advantage and the biggest thing that this thing has going for it. The weight of a, a standard duplex is 19.5 ounces you go with the camo that ups it to 20.5 ounces and then if you go with the thicker material it ups it to about 22 ounces maybe just a little under 22 ounces so super lightweight and for the room that you get this is this is a two-person tent whether or not you want to actually sleep with two people in there it's about 56 inches wide inside so you can get two wide pads next to each other now there's not going to be much room for anything else but this does have vestibules on either side so if you had two people each person can get in and out each side they can store their stuff on the vestibule they aren't huge vestibules but they're there but that weight man it is hard to find something especially for the size, the amount of room that it has inside. If you're a solo hiker, if you're out one person and you're doing a, a through hike, and yeah, there are lighter options out there. Even some of the Z-Packs options are lighter, but what you're gonna sacrifice there is definitely the space. So you can go with one of the one person ones and that's just gonna get your sleeping pad in there and then you've got the vestibule. Kind of like if you were using this as two person, which is what it's rated for. But as a solo hiker, you can go all the way to one side and then have plenty of room to store stuff, do work. If you're solo hiking a long trail and you get days upon days that maybe you're injured, you're nursing an injury and you're waiting out a storm and you're holed up in your tent, you want that extra space in there. You want that room where you can lay things out, go through things, maybe do repairs to kit maybe read, maybe work on a laptop or a, a tablet or whatever it is you have with you, be able to lay out maps. And this allows you to do that while laying in your sleeping bag, while laying there and not having to worry about where stuff is. Is it under my pad? Is it over here? Is it over there? You've got a nice space that you can actually do that. And I think that's a big advantage of this. Let's take a look inside of here at just how much space there really is. Okay, so you can get inside of here and like I could sit over here and do stuff and I've got my sleeping pad now the sleeping pad I've got in here is the Exped down mat winter UL long wide so it's 77.6 inches long and 25.6 inches wide so this is a big pad and I've still got quite a bit of room here you know this much room 
that I could do stuff, set stuff, whatever. Plus, I've got the vestibules. On that side, I've actually got my pack sitting in the vestibule right now. And if I had this one deployed, I could put stuff in here. I could cook out here. Uh, and that's, that's one of the advantages to having vestibules is that you can protect yourself from the elements that are out there. But you can see, I could get over here on my pad. I'm not up against the side here. And I've got all this room. I've got all this room over here where I could store stuff, set stuff, know where it is. Uh, I've got these pockets, one on the head end, one on the foot end. And it's just, it's a really good... A good use of space the weight to size is what sells this thing without a doubt that is what sells this tent now this tent has a bathtub floor design which means that it is actually down on the ground and it comes up on the sides a little bit and then it's got a bug net surround all the way around the uh, the bathtub and what that allows is it allows ventilation in between the floor and that and it keeps, if there's any condensation that runs down, it runs down and goes outside rather than getting in the floor of your tent. As long as you have it set up and pitched, pulled out pretty well. Now you do have both vestibules on either side and entries on either side. So right now this side is closed and the side in front of me is open. But you could open both sides up and create a lot of ventilation going through. You could open half of it up, block the wind coming from one side, and still allow a little bit of flow there. Um, a lot of options for how you work with it. Here you can see the vestibule, and you can see I've got my backpack just kind of sitting in there. Uh, not a huge vestibule, but it does provide enough room for you to be able to store your stuff outside without there being too much of a, a problem or a hassle. So those are some of the pros to this tent. Let's talk about some of the cons that I see for this tent. Well, number one, the big one, is that you have a single layer tent. And what that means is that the wall of the tent is exposed on the inside of the tent. So when you're inside of here, you're exposed to this inner layer. And what that does is, normally if you have a double layer, the outer layer is completely the water resistant layer, and so, You'll have a breathable layer that your 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 condensation and dew and stuff will form on, and there's a separation. So if it drips, it's going to drip on the inner body, and usually that inner body will either absorb it, or dissipate it, or let it slide off onto the outside. Now, when you have a single layer, that condensation gets on there, and if it drips, it's dripping onto you or your stuff that's inside of the tent. So that's that's one of the big issues that people have with it. The other one is it's off of trekking poles. If you're out and you happen to break a trekking pole, well, you're gonna have a hard time setting up your tent. You could try and find a branch or something. It is reinforced with a thicker material up on the top, so you could try and find a branch that's about 120 uh, centimeters and put it in there and see if that'll work. It's gonna be difficult. You could get by and you could make it work until you get somewhere where you could get trekking poles. But if you don't have trekking poles, there is another option. They do offer a freestanding pole solution that it's a, a skeleton of poles that then hook to it. Um, but it's a whole lot more expensive. Which gets us to one of the other big disadvantages of this tent and that is the price. This is not a cheap tent. So with the camo design that I've got, it's $629. For the standard, it's $599, and then as you start adding options, start adding other pieces, that price just grows. So, not a cheap tent, not a cheap option, but if you're looking for lightweight, at 20.5 ounces or 19.5 ounces, this is a solid, solid tent. It has a lot of pullouts. So to get this thing fully guyed out the way that I have it right now, it takes eight stakes. You've got one for each corner, that's four. The two pullouts on the ends, that's six, and then the two pullouts for your poles, the ridge line in the center, and for your vestibules. So that's eight stakes. So that's a lot of stakes for a single tent. Not freestanding, as I already said, so you need to have an area where you can get stakes into the ground. If you're on a very rocky terrain, or a completely rocky surface, um, a rock surface, you're not gonna be able to get those in, and you're gonna be looking for other solutions. Maybe staking it and setting some rocks on the stakes but 
a lot of times if you've got big winds, uh, those rocks are gonna get pulled. So a lot, of, a lot of variables there to think about and to consider. A lot of people think this is a fragile material, but really I've been using DCF, the Dyneema uh, Cuban fiber for quite a while and I've had almost zero issues with it. And I think as long as you take care of it, it's not gonna be a big deal. But DCF does have one downside and that is its packability. So this thing does not pack down small. While it's a, a rather small tent and it doesn't have poles other than your own trekking poles, it packs down about that big. So it's about the size of a uh, Bear Vault 500 bear canister. Maybe a little bit smaller than that, but not much smaller. It is a pretty large pack size. Uh, I think that the on the on the website, I think the dimensions they give is seven inches by 13 and a half inches or something along those lines. So not small, definitely not like some of the big Agnes ones that will fit down to about the size of a softball. Um, so again, that's another piece to consider. Big advantages though, again, we go back to weight to size, the space in here, the space that you get for the weight is absolutely incredible. And I know that is one of the things that people go to over and over and over again and it's the reason it's going to continue these types of tents are going to continue to be the top sellers and the picks for those people out on long trails and doing long distance stuff so if you've got any comments any feedback anything about this tent is this something that would fit into your budget is this something that would go into your pack or would you opt for something else for one reason or another is there something about this tent that you would completely shy away from. I wanna know. I wanna know what you guys are thinking. Leave the comments down below so that we can get into that conversation and figure out what works for people and what doesn't and why. Those are the things I wanna know about, is why. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Again, any questions, leave them down below and I will get back to you. I appreciate you guys coming along. I'll see you down the trail.